Did you know that 45% of Americans typically set New Year's resolutions and this is something that typically happens at the beginning of the year that signifies a new starting point where people like to set new habits and good practices going into the new year. And just like people set New Year's resolutions for their life, you should also be setting some good healthy practices for your business. That's why in today's video, I'm going to give you eight things you can do before the year is out that will help you to organize your business. I attract life. money, wealth is in my reach. I got everything I want and everything I need. I keep my mind open, abundance overflows. I budget right and I know where all my money goes. I am dead free and money works for me. Money in my sleep, a magnet for prosperity. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I deserve the best because I grind, take my what time. What kingdom over. builder? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Ebony Yvonne, your favorite business coach in these internet streets. I coach corporate professionals and first-time entrepreneurs on how to turn their skills, their talents, and expertise into profitable online businesses. Welcome to Soul Chef Land. This is my internet home where I help you to go from confused to the ethical cash generating boss that we both know you are meant to be. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can get your business life together, okay? I'm going to give you eight things that you can do before 2022 to organize your business so that things can run a whole lot smoother and you can set yourself up for success going into the new year typically the end of the year is always a time for me when I start to kind of do a year-end review I do personal self-reflection think about the things that I accomplished throughout the year maybe the things that fell through the crack um, I look at my business and see what things went really well what things didn't go that good and I kind of start to plan for the next year and that is what kind of sparked me to do this video today because I know a lot of people struggle to keep their business in order. And I want to give you some quick, easy things that you can do right now to organize your business before the end of the year. So I don't want to waste any more time. I want to jump right in and give you eight things that you can do to declutter your business organize your business and ultimately make your life a whole lot easier so let's go ahead and jump in with number one which is a business assessment okay so this is pretty much kind of like a business review where i want you to take some time to really look at all of your business systems right are your systems working how they're supposed to are your business systems broken is anything falling apart are things slipping through the cracks you want to make sure that everything is functioning how it's supposed to and you are also want to look for rooms for improvement maybe you've outgrown some of your systems and it's time to upgrade maybe to a new plan or maybe you need a new system altogether but these are things that you want to look at. You also want to look at your sales system, your delivery systems. Is everything running smoothly? You want to look at your marketing channels. Look and see of all the different ways that you're marketing your business, which channels are generating the most leads for you, which channels may not be generating leads at all. You want to look at those things and say, okay, is this something that maybe we're not generating leads, but it's because we didn't give it a lot of attention. So next year, I want to focus more attention on this specific marketing channel so that it can generate more leads or it may be something that you put a lot of effort and energy and resources into and it didn't generate leads for you at all and you're like okay this system isn't working so we're going to get rid of this marketing channel altogether and implement something else or maybe you want to focus on the other channels that you have in place that are generating the most leads and sales for you so you definitely want to look at your marketing system your marketing channels you want to look at all of your systems and make sure that they're functioning appropriately and you also want to look at all of your sales funnels so when i say sales funnel i'm not just talking about like your email funnels for like if someone joins your email list and you send them that welcome sequence right i am talking about your entire sales funnel from the point where someone comes in contact with your brand to the point that they become a follower they become a customer um, whatever that conversion or transition point is for you 
look at your sales system and look at that entire customer journey and make sure that it, it's functioning the way that it's supposed to. If it is, you may want to even dive a little bit deeper. You may want to look at different points throughout that customer journey where maybe your conversion percentages are really low or maybe you can just set a goal to say, I want to improve my conversion by 5% or 10%, whatever the magic number is for you. You want to conduct a business assessment so you have a good snapshot of where you are now, how your business did throughout the year, and it also will help you to paint a picture for where it is that you want to go going into the new year. So let's jump into number two. In addition to do your business assessment, you also wanna make sure that you take a look at your business expenses, right? You wanna review all the expenditures that you have for your business, whether they are month monthly, if they're quarterly or on an annual basis, you wanna make sure that you're not paying for something that you no longer need. I know for me, I am the queen of apps, the queen of tools. I'm always signing up for stuff and most of the time I'll sign up for something with like the annual plan just because you get like two months free or whatever and then I end up paying for it and then it's like mm, I don't even like this I'd rather use the tool I already had so sometimes I always have to remind myself to go in and cancel those plans so that they don't automatically re renew for the next year when I didn't use it anyway. So look for any expenses, any tools, any things that you are paying for, subscriptions that you don't necessarily need. And then also look for places where you may be able to cut costs. Uh, um, if you find that you're paying a lot of like different app subscriptions and different tools, maybe you can look for a new tool that is kind of like an all-in-one thing that's going to encompass everything that you need for your business business in one tool instead of having to pay for five separate tools and then that way you can minimize your cost and then streamline the different services that you're using but you definitely want to do a review of all of your expenses make sure no one's overcharging you because we do know that sometimes pricing plans can change over time and if you're not constantly looking at your bank statements or your invoices and receipts then you could have had an increase that you were not aware of so just make sure that you are doing a business expense review so next up is going to be taking a look at your business income so this is going to be broken down into three different sec sections i want you to look at your income from the perspective of the actual products and services that you're offering i also want you to do a body compass check and then i also want you to look at it from a client experience standpoint as well so i'm going to break down each one of these so you know exactly what i mean so first things first is I want you to make a list of all the different income generators that you have in your business every single product and service that you offer if it's a coaching program if it's a course if it's templates um if you're doing consulting on the side if it's speaking engagements whatever it is i want you to make a list of all of the different income sources that you had for the entire year and then i want you to kind of rank those based on your profit boosting ones the ones that were your gener your income generators that made you the most money and then i want you to put them in order all the way down to the bottom for the ones that generated the least amount of money or no money at all and the reason why I want you to do this is because a lot of times we have products and services in our business that we love because we created them or because they mean something to us. Maybe it was the first product we created, but it may not be something that's actually generating money. There's something that we need to take into the new year. So it may be time for you to retire some of your products and services if they're no longer money makers in your business but then also this gives you a chance to identify maybe you have products and services that you know you didn't really think were bringing in that much money but they're actually more of a money maker than you actually thought they were throughout the year so when you actually list those out and you put a number to say this is how much this product generated throughout the year this is how much money i generated from speaking engagements this is how much money this coaching package generated then you can actually see 
where the bulk of your income is coming in so that you can make um, better decisions going into the new year. So you may want to focus doing specific promotions around the money makers that you had. Maybe it's time to throw the whole thing away and you want to create new products and services that are going to be fresh for your business. So being able to break that down will help you do that. In addition to looking at the money aspect and which programs and services actually generated money or the ones that didn't, you also want to do what I call a body compass, which is basically just like a soul check. This is you being able to check in with yourself, especially if you are an online coach. Is the coaching packages and services that you're providing are they still serving you? Do you find yourself feeling overwhelmed or burnt out because you feel like you're taking on too many private one-on-one -on -one coaching clients? Um, do you feel like you're spreading yourself thin because you have too many different products, too many programs operating at one time? So that is what I mean when I say about doing like a soul check and using your body compass. You want to make sure that the services that you are providing are soul honoring, right? That they are in alignment with what you're doing, with your business values and your goals. But you also want to make sure that you're not overworking yourself and um stressing yourself out or burning yourself out because you're trying to do too much so really take a moment to reflect and see if you want to restructure some of your services maybe you want to add services or take some away maybe you want to restructure if you're doing one-on-one -on -one or group coaching you may want to restructure how you deliver that so that you feel good and you're not stressing yourself out okay all right and then last but not least is your client success so when it comes to your products and services really take an honest assessment and ask yourself are your clients getting the desired results that they were looking for when they sign up for your programs and services when they enroll in one of your courses when they purchase your templates um your products your coaching packages and services are your clients actually getting results are they completing the program are they showing up for their coaching calls you know these are type of questions that you want to ask just to make sure that you're providing a good customer experience but you also want to make sure that you're delivering on the goods and services that were promised and that people are getting to that promised land <laughs> all right next up is you want to make sure that you are cleaning up your emails listen i am a self-confessed email hoarder okay i never want to delete an email because i always feel like i may need to come back to it at some point and i never end up having to go back so this is a time of year when i really have to go into my email and really say okay like ebony is this something that i still need can i delete this can it be archived or maybe you have emails that slip through the cracks that you needed to respond to that you never did this is a perfect time for you to pick back up on those emails and follow up with potential prospects with your clients with um different companies or brands that may have reached out to you you want to make sure that you you follow up delete and archive emails as necessary so you can start the year with a nice fresh clean organized email box for me um throughout the year i hate deleting emails i told y'all but what i do is in my main inbox i will create subfolders so as i open emails as i read emails then i kind of drag and drop them over into folders that correspond with the type of email it was whether it was someone reaching out for a collaboration or a partnership if it was um, a speaking engagement opportunity if it was a client email um for like my coaching clients where you know sometimes they'll shoot me questions back and forth or maybe it was a prospect and someone was just inquiring about my products and services i pretty much have separate folders for all of those where i just drag them into a folder and then at the end of the year i will go in and then archive or delete any emails that i no longer need 
And while we are talking about cleaning up, y'all, I want you to scroll on over to your Google Drive, your Dropbox, whatever it is that you are using for storage, and I want you to clean it up. I already know it's cluttered. I already know you got all type of PDFs and documents and spreadsheets all over that thing. So I just want you to go in there, clean it up, create some folders and subfolders, organize your storage, make sure <laughs> that if there's things you no longer need, that you delete them you archive them for me with my google drive i never really delete um well i do delete like client folders so with my private one-on-one -on -one coaching clients i have like a folder that has their name on it and i keep that active for the duration of their coaching period and then i leave it up to six months afterwards and then i'll send them an email like 30 days before and i'll say hey i'm going to delete your folder so if the, if you want to access it if there's anything you need make sure you go in and download it before this date or whatever and then i'll put the date that i plan to actually delete the folder off of my google drive but um even then depending on the client and what what all we did sometimes i will actually delete the folder and then sometimes what i'll do is i'll just um i have this i don't know where it is i have an external hard drive but what i'll do is i'll move the folder out of google drive onto my external hard drive which is like a four terabyte space so that way i'm not cluttering up my google drive and it's not taking up a lot of storage i i have way too much um i'm not even gonna tell y'all how much i'm paying a month for my google drive storage i'm just not even gonna do that but i'm i'm gonna do better in 2022 i promise <laughs> all right clean up your storage okay i already know it needs cleaning your girl needs to clean her storage too but let's go ahead and get into the next thing you could do before 2022 to organize your business and get that thing decluttered and that is to update all of your bios now when i say update your bios i mean update your bios all of them your elevator pitch i want you to update your social media profiles your instagram bio your facebook bio your linkedin bio if you have one i want you to update the bio and your media kit and your speaker bio or packet if you have one anywhere you have a bio i want you to update it on your website on your sales pages on your landing pages i want you to go in and update your bio just to make it sure that it's up to date and accurate over time you know you may have had new media features that you want to include you may have tweaked your title or your mission statement and values a little bit you may have changed what you do right you may have new accolades or new certifications that you've earned throughout the year and so those may be reasons that you need to update your bio but even if you think you don't need to update it just go check for me okay because you may look at your bio and be like you know what i really do need to change this thanks Eb. <laughs> You can just thank me later, okay? <laughs> All right. So let's keep it going with things that you can do before the year is out to organize your business. In addition to updating your bio across all platforms, you also want to review and update any links. So on all of your social media platforms, on all of your websites, inside your media kits, your speaking packets, you want to make sure that any links that you have are still working, that they're not broken, that they're up to date. You want to make sure that everything works like it should. If you're like me, I use this service called um, Rebrandly to create short links. It's kind of like Bitly, but a little different. Um, but basically, I'll go in and make sure that all of my Rebrandly links still work, that they're directed to the right place, they go where they're supposed to go, and that nothing is broken. So this is the perfect time for you to update your own links as well. Just go through review make sure they're good to go no links are broken and you are set up for the new year so people can click those buttons and work with you okay all right so last but not least number eight is probably going to be the biggest thing you can do to help get organized 
and set yourself up for success in the new year and this is going to be to conduct a time audit and you're probably like Ebony what do you mean by a time audit I'm going to tell you okay so typically throughout the year especially if you are a solopreneur and you are wearing all the hats doing all the things then this is a perfect time for you to conduct an audit typically I would say try to do for seven days or um, 14 days one to two weeks and just track your time track the different tasks that you're doing track how much time you're spending on different activities if you're spending time creating content for social media if you're just scrolling wasting time on social media how much time you're spending doing strategy calls um how much time you're spending with paid coaching sessions or actually delivering your products and services how much time are you spending on each and every single activity that you're doing day to day in your business and the reason why conducting a time audit is good is because a lot of times we're doing so much that we don't even realize where we're wasting time where we could be more efficient sometimes I find myself doing things that is like okay Ebony I didn't really need to do that I could have actually delegated that to my assistant and it would have been a better use of her time and my time if I would have just delegated that task to her and then I could have focused on more important things that I needed to get done that day so that's why I think doing a time audit is really good you can see where you're spending the majority of your time you can see how you're wasting time you can see where you have places to actually incorporate time fillers you can really assess okay when you're doing the different tasks day to day are these tasks that you actually need to do are these tasks that you can actually delete all together and remove from from your activities list are these tasks that you could be delegating to someone else that would be a better um better time served so definitely do that time study so that you have a clear picture on the different activities that take up the most of your time but then it will also help you with planning for the new year so you know maybe it's time for you to actually hire help right so um doing that time study will definitely help you and just a pro tip if you do your time study and there's a lot of activities where you find like you know what these are things that i could actually be delegating it may be time for you to say well you know the amount of tasks that need to be done this is something that i could actually have the capacity to hire a, a VA, right? A virtual assistant, or maybe you're doing a lot of marketing outreach. So it's like, you know what? I need to hire a social media manager or I need to hire a marketing manager or something like that. But it all starts with you knowing your needs and where you are by conducting that time audit. So please don't skip it. All right, so there you have it. Those are eight things that you can do before the year is out to declutter your business and organize your business as well before the new year starts. I wanna hear from you. Let me know down in the comments below this video, which one of these are you going to do first? Have you already started to get organized for the new year? What are some things that you are doing to get organized for the new year? You know my motto, sharing is caring so drop your list down in the comments below this video as always thanks so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe turn on those notifications so you will be the first to get notified when i upload a brand new video next week in the meantime feel free to check out these two videos right here this playlist right here if you really about that life all right bye y'all